Hey you guys and welcome back to Back Beyond Tech. So last week I finished my build vlog, my rendering machine, and then I said I would get some benchmarks too. So I've been benchmarking this week. So I did a few things um, around Cinebench, I did a render, I did a couple of synthetics, and then I threw in a few games. So all the benchmarks yeah. barring the render test because the render rendering a video takes ages um i did three runs same setting took an average that's all it did. so we're gonna have a quick look at the system specs just now and then we're gonna get straight into the benchmarks so here you go <laughs> So that was it that was the the benchmark so there's a couple surprises there for me definitely um you know the cinebench score i expected the xeon machine to do better you know it's got 10 more 10 more threads than the the amd machine so there's no surprise there that it, it beat it out considering its lower uh, core clock speed and the render test was really interesting though however so that was just a six minute 1080p video um rendered uh, rendered out um, with everything set to max two pass VDR etc and yeah the Xeon machine did it in a less than half the time of my AMD machine which is massive that is such a big deal to me it's doing exactly what I wanted to do I knew it would be faster but I didn't know it would be quite that much faster which is really surprising for essentially, what was it, uh, the chips cost me 20 pounds each, so for 40 pounds of chips, it's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, big thumbs up for that, I'm really happy about that. Uh, and then moving into the synthetics, which is quite interesting, I think, so uh, Unigene, that was just a straight run, 1080p at, um, on Ultra, and the AMD machine, edged it and I mean edged it by not very much by about 200 points over the Xeon machine which is what I expected I expected it to do better it's got much you know it's clocked almost two, two gigahertz faster than the Xeon despite the Xeon having 10 more threads so no surprises there um, Firestrike however that was surprising so Firestrike was um, oh, sorry guys so that was just running normal Firestrike 1080p um, a normal run, like I say, and yeah, the Xeon machine beat out the AMD by a considerable margin, by almost a thousand points, which I was very surprised about considering its lower clock speed. Um, they're both, like I say, both machines are running the same graphics card, exactly the same graphics card. Um, so I was quite surprised about that. But then when you look at the breakdown scores, I think it's largely the physics score 
that's driving that out, which is no surprise because the physics score is either of 16 or 32 parallel work streams. So yeah, the, the Xeon is obviously going to win out there. But yeah, surprising nonetheless. And I'm quite, quite happy about that. <laughs> So then I just picked a few games that I'm playing at the moment. Um, so the way I did this was the same, same point, because I've got Steam on both my machines, so I've got my save games on both my machines, so it was just um, a five minute run through the game from the same point three times and I took the average. I was using fraps to record the um, to record the frames as well on both, both, both machines. So, Starting off with Doom, I ran Doom and OpenGL. I didn't bother looking at Vulkan, purely because NVIDIA cards aren't really getting a huge bump in performance from, from the Vulkan API at the moment. But I think hopefully that'll change when NVIDIA uh, get to grips with that. Anyway, side, side point. So the AMD machine came out on top, you know, not by much though, by maybe like 13 frames. So you're talking like 10% difference. So yeah, it was just getting over 105 uh, or something like that, and I think the Xeon was rocking over 90, which is absolutely fine for me. Uh, in Doom, everything set to Ultra at 1080p, just, you know, yeah, quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, either machine will run that game, absolutely no problem, which again, given the Xeon's lower um, core speed, I was quite surprised about. And then I threw Battleborn in now, Battleborn is an odd game, I mean, um, I only bought this about a week ago, and it was part of the Humble Bundle, so in effect, when you look at how many games I bought in that bundle, I think Battleborn cost me about £2, so, um, first of all, I've got to say, a lot of fun, uh, and a very overlooked game, because I think mainly because of Overwatch, but, again, the AMD machine edged out the, the Xeon, but both machines were running on average over a hundred frames a second which is pretty impressive um, I did not expect the Xeon to do quite so well as it did so again it's probably about a 10% offset between the two so you know nothing really like you're not gonna <laughs> I don't think you're gonna notice gaming to be honest um, <clears throat> and then the third game was a real surprise for me so Rise of the Tomb Raider um, I've been playing for a long time um, quite sad I'm actually trying to max out the achievements in it but there is loads to do so I ran that on very high um, with HBO HBAO plus on so this is where it got interesting for me so the AMD rig on average got around 80 frames per second which is is good you know I was happy um, I was worried that it was going to take a big dip because I used to play this game and I had my two 970s in SLI, so it was good to see that one was still doing the business. So, um, yeah, that was awesome. And then the Xeon machine, however, took a massive hit in performance that I was not expecting, um, especially considering I was running this game in DirectX 12, which is supposed to be a bit more multi-threaded uh, friendly. So. The Xeon was only getting around, what was it, getting around 50, 50, 50 something frames on average, maybe 52 frames on average, from what I remember from the benchmark, so that was a big surprise to me. And I mean, don't get me wrong, 52 is fine, you, you, you can play at 52, I'm not complaining. It's just that offset seems huge, considering where what we've seen with the other the other benchmarks so far, I was quite surprised about that. Um, and I, and I ran that, like I say, that was three runs, taking the average. Um, so, I, and to be honest, the, it didn't really change that much. It wasn't like I was averaging out huge differences there. They, they were around 50, 54, then 53 kind of thing. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like there was, there was one number, one run that was sort of offsetting the whole data set. So, that is just how it performs, and I don't understand why that is, and we need to look into that. So anyway, that's the benchmarks done, guys. Um, you know, quite interesting, like I said, and quite surprising in a lot of ways. So there are really two questions that I'd like to answer. So the first question for me is, was it worth building a separate machine to render in? So yes, it was for me. Taking away the gaming aspect of it, uh, you know, because the Xeon machine obviously looks like it can game as well. Purely from a work stream workflow point of view, 
hundred percent it was worth building this machine. It has cut my render time in half, and that's it. That's all I need to say. Um, yeah, so totally worth it. For five hundred and fifty pounds, um, that level of performance is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I cannot recommend it enough. I mean, I don't know how much more performance I could have squeezed if I'd gone with a, a Xeon 2670 maybe. But that would have pushed the price up a bit. That would have probably brought it up to around 650. No, actually higher than that. Probably about 700 because the boards are very expensive. I don't think I would have got such a bargain with the motherboard if I'd gone down that route. Um, however, having said that, I'm quite happy with the performance I'm getting from the, the Xeon 5640s. Um, so yeah, 100% worth it. Um, if you have a heavy workload, a heavy CPU bound workload, um, and, you, and you have an AMD or an Nvidia card, you can take advantage of GPU acceleration for certain things, I would say build a workstation. It's one of the best things I've done. Having used this machine for about a week now and, and gotten rid of all the bugs from it, it's like fantastic. So yes, I'm very happy. So question two really is to address something I talked about briefly last time in my last video where certain people who make great tech videos, I'm not taking that away from them, have been a bit down on the dual Xeon setup. Um, However, I think really they, they've been coming from the wrong starting point. So they've been comparing Xeons, like this, this Xeon, or Xeons, you know, um, like the 2670, which again is about three, four years old. This chip's even older, um, to Skylake i7s. Um, and I think that is totally unfair. I, I think if I was to benchmark this machine against the i7 4790K that I built for my girlfriend, um, which now has a GTX 770 in it, um, the Jules Zeon rig would lose out. But I have no doubt about that. The i7 is overclocked, it's a much better IPC. Um, so yeah, I think you're not, it's not a fair, it's not a fair comparison in my mind. It's, it's not apples to apples. It's totally different. Um, whereas I think comparing the Xeon rig I've built now to my AMD FX 6350, um, they're similar age to IPCs, um, and I think that is a fair comparison, and that's why coming from this, going to my render rig, I am seeing the performance bump that I'm seeing and the improvement in my workflow that I'm seeing, and for me that's totally worth it for 550 pounds. Um, I think if you were to benchmark any 5640 machine or 2670 machine against any of the FX chips, higher end FX chips, uh, and even up to the sort of um, second, third generation um, Intel machines, um, you would see an offset in favor of the in favor of the Xeon, definitely. Um, there's no two ways about it, I don't think. Whereas I think comparing it to things like Haswell and Haswell E and Skylake, uh, is, and I don't mean to be rude to these guys who've done these comparisons, but I think it is pointless. I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, so anyway, anyway guys, sorry. That's it, that's, that's it, that's the benchmark. Um, those are my thoughts. I'm really happy, like I say, for 550 pounds. Great, great bang for buck, brilliant machine. It can handle my workflow, it's half the time, and it can gain, um, so yeah. I'm totally happy with that. So, I'm gonna be coming back at you next week with another video, maybe, guys. Probably Saturday or Sunday again. I'm kind of thinking um, one a week while I'm uh, while I'm starting up is about right, just to keep the. I wanna I wanna I don't wanna release bad content. So yeah, and uh, this time next week you'll probably see another video. So if you like this video, guys, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you dislike it, leave a comment. But don't forget to subscribe and we'll be coming back at you very soon with some more tech videos. Bye for now.